this is a major problem on metro systems throughout the world. That train just inches away. Take another look. The second time, police say he followed through and pushed the victim off the platform onto the tracks. Commuters on a platform, literally the difference between certain disaster and a happy end. Whether accidental or deliberate, people falling onto tracks is a serious problem for metro systems. Not only does it cause service disruptions, but also it often ends in the death of the person who fell onto the tracks. Thus, it is important that we separate people from train tracks. Luckily, there is something that does exactly that, and they are known as platform screen doors. But what are platform screen doors, you may ask? Platform screen doors are a set of barriers that divide the platform from the tracks. This is in order to keep people from falling onto the tracks, thus improving safety. These barriers are typically made from glass and could come in full height or half height. These doors remain closed unless there is a train present at the station. Platform screen doors are effective in preventing suicide. In a 2019 study conducted in Shanghai, China, platform screen doors were shown to have reduced suicides on the city's metro system by 91%. Aside from the obvious benefit of safety, Benefits of platform screen doors include reduced operation costs, better climate control, reduced wind piston effects, and improved security. While full automation isn't necessary for a rapid transit system to have platform screen doors, most rapid transit systems that have them are automated to at least some extent. Today, platform screen doors are commonly found on metro systems throughout Europe and Asia. With China, Denmark, South Korea, Singapore, Thailand, Qatar, and the United Arab Emirates having some type of barrier on virtually all of their metro stations. Other places where platform screen doors can be found in include Australia and Latin America with Sao Paulo, Brazil installing platform screen doors on virtually all of their newer stations. One part of the world where platform screen doors seem to be exceptionally rare in is North America, particularly the United States and Canada. In those places, the vast majority of platform screen doors are found on airport people movers, with a notable exception being the Las Vegas monorail. Wait. There seems to be a contradiction here. On one hand, platform screen doors seem like a no-brainer. After all, they enhance safety on rapid transit systems all while improving efficiency. But on the other hand, platform screen doors are not that common on metro systems throughout the world, especially in North America. So why don't more metro systems have platform screen doors? Well, the biggest reason why most North American metro systems don't have platform screen doors is the diversity of rolling stocks. A notable example of this is the Vancouver SkyTrain. While the SkyTrain is fully automated, which makes it more than ideal for platform screen doors to be installed on it, there are four different type of rolling stocks operating on the SkyTrain three of which are simultaneously operating on one line, which makes it less than ideal to install platform screen doors on the SkyTrain, as they all each have different door alignments. Another major problem metro systems face while installing platform screen doors is the fact that they were designed and built before platform screen doors really caught on. I know what you're thinking. If a metro system didn't have platform screen doors to begin with, you can just retrofit it later on. After all, the Hong Kong MTR did it, the Seoul subway did it. Well, here's a problem with that. If a metro system didn't have platform screen doors to begin with, then most likely they weren't designed with platform screen doors in mind. This can complicate things when adding platform screen doors to pre-existing metro systems. One example of this can be seen on the New York City subway's attempt at adding platform screen doors. During the late 2010s, the New York City Transit Authority conducted a system-wide platform screen door feasibility study on its subway system. 
the NYCTA studied all 472 stations on the New York subway and found that platform screen door installation was only feasible on 27% of the stations. According to the summary of conclusions from the NYCTA's platform screen door study, common obstacles to retrofitting New York City's subway stations to have platform screen door include structural integrity of the platform edges, lack of space available to install the needed equipment, obstacles placed too close to the platform edges, and ADA requirements. Finally, and quite possibly most importantly, the third reason why metro systems in North America do not have platform screen doors is the cost to install them. In 2022, the New York City subway backtracked a plan to install platform screen doors on three stations as it would have costed 33.3 million dollars to install them on each of the stations. Similarly, the Toronto Transit Commission found that installing platform screen doors on its subway system would cost the agency over $1 billion. Both of those cases tie into a bigger underlying problem in North American public transport, in that transit construction costs are a lot higher than they should be. Although the transit cost problem is another topic for another video, while there are genuine issues many public transit agencies face when installing platform screen doors on their metro systems, there are some alternatives to platform screen doors that can work for stations where full height platform screen doors are infeasible to install. The most common alternative to full height platform screen doors are half height platform screen doors. These barriers are more often found on above ground metro stations than full height platform screen doors are. A major advantage half height platform screen doors have over full height platform screen doors is that they're cheaper to install and weigh less. This makes this type of barrier a popular option to install onto existing stations. Such examples of that can be seen in Sydney, Paris, and Tokyo. The second alternative to be discussed here is vertical platform screen doors, which as the name suggests, opens vertically instead of horizontally. Because the doorways on vertical platform screen doors are much wider than those of horizontal platform screen doors, these doors are compatible with multiple door orientations of multiple rolling stocks. While these types of barriers are typically made out of rope, a glass version of vertical platform screen doors is currently in the experimental phase. Installations of this type of barriers can be found on the metro system of Daegu, South Korea and Sofia, Bulgaria, as well as the commuter rail system of Osaka, Japan. The last alternative to be discussed here is the variable pitch platform screen doors. Unlike the previous two alternatives discussed here, this alternative is unfortunately mostly in the experimental phase, but they may actually be the most promising out of the three alternatives I discussed today. You see, unlike vertical platform screen doors or half-height platform screen doors, variable pitch platform screen doors fully enclose the stations. This makes them just as effective as full height platform screen doors, while solving the problem of non-standardized rolling stocks and associated door spacings. An installation of this type of barrier is set to be installed on the Umekita station in Osaka, Japan. So, okay, we know that we can retrofit metro systems to have platform screen doors or other types of barrier. So, maybe the real reason why most North American systems don't have platform screen doors is the lack of political will? While that is certainly true to some extent, there is still some hope for platform screen doors on North American metro systems. The Honolulu Rail Transit is set to become the first large-scale publicly run metro system in the United States to feature platform screen doors. Although the platform screen doors on it are only going to be of half height. Phase 1 of the Honolulu Rail Transit is set to open in July of 2023. Also set to open in 2023 is the first phase of Montreal's Oiseau Express Metropolitan, or the REM. 
Each of the 26 stations on the REM will have platform screen doors, and unlike the heart, they will all be full height platform screen doors. As for currently existing metro systems, BART does plan to install platform screen doors on some of their stations once they phased out all their older trains and completely installed the new train control system. Although BART's claim of a plan to install platform screen doors seems more like lip service, I hope BART does follow through with their plans to install platform screen doors and that more metro systems in North America retrofit their systems to have platform screen doors. After all, safety and performance are some of the most important measure of effectiveness for transportation systems, and metros are no different.